So now we'll move into the statements, just here, for the realization of divine mind. So you could also call this the affirmations for the realization of Christ mind. Hello everyone. I just wanted to um, take the opportunity to say hello. Um, I'm really been missing um, making the video series that I was working on regarding revelation and the elements and all the different alchemical symbols and breakdowns and their relation to the body. Um, I was really enjoying doing those and I certainly have a long list um, of videos that I want to make and that I'm going to make and I'm really excited about doing that. Um, there was a bit of a, um, a challenge thrown into my midst and that was the sad fact that my mum um, passed away, um, which I still am struggling to um, speak about. Um, so that is why I, in the end, decided it was just very important for me to just take a moment and come away from really focusing on um, the kind of more academic, um, intellectual side of the spiritual teachings and the videos that I was making and really bring it back to the heart of, you know, what it means to be, what it means to me to be on the path, um, to be seeking a vision, to be building, and maintaining and honouring that personal um, relationship with the God in me and outside of me and through me. Um, so there has been a lot of spiritual practice going on in my life. I went on a Kundalini um, weekend retreat uh, a few weeks ago uh, which I'm I'm very grateful um, to have had the opportunity to have done. I was a little bit apprehensive about being away from um, my son uh, for four days, but apparently um, I can do that and it's okay. Um, mum guilt is a very real thing um before i had it became a parent i had no idea what a sense of responsibility i would have and how many you know different things i would feel in relation to always wanting to be there and always wanting to do what's right um you know for this little life that I have been part of bringing into the world. Um, but yes, the Kundalini retreat. If that is something that any of you feel you would enjoy um, or would like to do, then definitely comment below and uh, maybe we, I can look into putting something together, going on a retreat physically removing yourself from your daily scenario is a huge part of why I think the retreats are so um, amazing and so useful. So anyway, I'm going to stop babbling on. I just felt like because it had been a while since I had um, posted a video and I know a few of you have asked about my whereabouts, which is really sweet. Um, and I really do honour all of you and I really am grateful to be for us all to be on this journey, this great awakening all together. And I know that we get a lot from each other. I certainly get a lot, take a lot from other 
uh, people who share on their YouTube channels, their Instagram pages, TikTok, all the rest of it. Um, so I'm I'm really grateful for all of you and for checking in on me is really kind um it has just been a healing process for me that was absolutely necessary and vital for me to stay grounded um and clear-minded in who i am where i've come from and you know where i'm going um so yeah Thank you for your patience and all your support, as always. Um, I thought it would be nice to read um, from this book. This, is, this book is about spiritual science and it is incredible. And it's by Charles Fillmore, um, who's a unity teacher. And probably some of you will know how much I love Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's teachings um and obviously the metaphysical bible dictionary is written by charles Fillmore, which has been an incredible tool on my journey um so i'm gonna get into it in a moment but this book i just can't tell you i just there's no words really that can describe or do it justice just how awesome this book is each chapter describes a different aspect of spirituality and spiritual gifts and at the end of each chapter um it has statements or affirmations for the realization of divine mind now i know most of you will have your own way of realizing divine mind activating divine mind you know switching into the christ mind or just having a sensitive conscience to be able to hear the christ mind um, or the enlightened mind if you like i always come back to this book and with my mum passing away um i don't know one day i just instantly reached for this book knowing that it would just, the dust would settle and everything will, you know, just be processed and healed and brought to light and exposed and dissolved as it needs to be by keeping, uh, you know, focused on, on love and on, you know, what are the important things? What are um, my resources to bring myself um to wholeness in mind body spirit soul um and this book is definitely one of my resources for doing that so i can't recommend it enough i will put a link to it below the video um and i'm gonna stop babbling now and read chapter one and then we will do the statements or affirmations for the realization of divine mind together at the end. And then um, hopefully, let me know if you love it. Um, if you do, then I will do the next chapter tomorrow and so on and so forth, um, just leading up to Christmas because Christmas is such a spiritual time. The energies in the cosmos, the way that the sun is moving, the way that, you know, our solar bodies are regenerated once a year in the same cycle as the sun. Every journey that we take around the sun is, you know, a solar year and at this time of year our bodies and minds are really being restored and uplifted um and that's a big part of what what christmas and um you know the winter uh, solstice is all about so just bear that in mind because although our lunar bodies um restore themselves every month on the monthly cycle which is why we honor the, the time when the moon is in our star sign each month for the sacred secretion. Um, 
our solar bodies are renewed only yearly. So this is a very important time. And I think like this is why we are faced with so many temptations at this time of year. There's just alcohol everywhere. There's chocolates and sweets um, or candies, as you call them in the States everywhere you turn, hanging on the tree, coming through your letterbox, inside Christmas crackers. Um, it's just endless and, and it will certainly sharpen your spiritual lens, your spiritual vision to um, as much as you can keep your temple body just so holy and so pure at this time of year from now until January, if possible, um, you know, be in a state of, of fasting as much as you can, even if you just abide by the kind of um, 816 rule, you know, where you eat for eight hours a day and then you fast for 16 hour day 16 hours that's going to go a long way to to keeping your body in a place where it can really rest and digest and you know you can really honor yourself in that way just do what you can you know and if you fall off the wagon don't worry about it to see it as an isolated moment and then do what you can again it's fine but it's a very important, very empowering, very invigorating time to condition yourself. Um, so anyway, without any further ado, let me read lesson one from The Science of Being, Christian Healing by Charles Fillmore. The true character of being. There is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty giveth them understanding. The science that is here set forth is founded upon spirit. It does not always conform to intellectual standards, but it is nevertheless scientific. The facts of spirit are of a spiritual character, and when understood in their right relation, they are orderly. Orderliness is law and is the test of true science. The lawful truths of spirit are more scientific than the constantly shifting opinions based on intellectual standards. The only real science is the science of spirit. It never changes. It is universally accepted by all who are in spirit. But one must be in the spirit before one can understand this science of spirit. The mind of spirit must become active in those who would grasp the orderly science of being that these lessons proclaim. It is not absolutely necessary that the spiritual part of man's nature be active at the beginning of his study of this science. The primal object of the lessons is to quicken the spiritual realm of consciousness and to bring about the breath of the Almighty that gives understanding. So let it be understood that we are teaching the science of spirit and that those who are receptive to the teaching will be inspired to spiritual consciousness. It is not difficult to accomplish. This receiving of the breath or inspiration of spirit, we are all inspired by spirit in certain states of consciousness. Understanding of the laws governing the realm of spirit will make it possible to attain this consciousness and to receive this inspiration whenever requirements are met. The starting point in spiritual realization is a right understanding of that one designated as the Almighty. 
It is strictly logical and scientific to assume that man comes forth from this one who is named variously, but who all agree is the origin of everything. Since man is the offspring of the Almighty, he must have the character of his parent. If the earthly child resembles his parents, how much more should the heavenly child resemble his parent? The truth that God is the father of man does away with the often proclaimed presumption that it is impossible for the finite to understand the infinite. God must be in his universe as everywhere intelligent power. Otherwise, it would fall to pieces. God is in the universe as its constant breath or inspiration. Hence, it is only necessary to find the point of contact in order to understand the one in whom we all live and move and have our being. A sense of logic is a fundamental constituent of man's being and all minds acquiesce in statements of logical sequence. We all see the relation and unity of cause and effect mentally stated, but because the realm of forms does not always carry out our premise, we fall away from the true standard and try to convince ourselves that our logic is somehow defective. The one important thing that the student of spiritual science must learn is to trust the logic of mind. If appearances are out of harmony with your mental premise, do not let them unseat your logic. Judge not according to appearance, but judge by righteous judgment. You would not take the mixed figures of a child working a problem in mathematics as an example of the trueness of the principle, nor would you detect an error in the problem unless you were somewhat familiar with the rules of mathematics. Mental propositions are the standards and governing principles in all sciences developed by man. In the science of creation, the same rule holds good. You may rest in the assurance that the principles that you mentally perceive as true of God are inviolate and that if there seems to be error in their outworking, it is because of some misapplication on the part of the demonstrator. OK, so it's basically saying that we lose faith in our ability as extensions of the creator, as preservers, as, you know, servants working or being conduits for the creative essence, because we don't always see immediate results in what we're praying for or what we're hoping for or the changes that we're hoping to happen in ourselves, in our spiritual abilities or the changes that we're hoping in, hoping to see in the reflections of people around us. So then we doubt that spiritual science truly works. So I'll go back to it, but just bear that in mind. By holding to the principle and insisting upon its accuracy, you open the way to a fuller understanding of it you will be shown the cause of the errors in the demonstration. So in other words, as you continue to believe and work, knowing that the principle is always working, you will come to understand it and know better how to operate it and how to really be at one with it. Then, if you have been in confusion mentally through contemplation of a world both good and evil and have in consequence got into sceptical ways, the only true remedy is to stand by the pure reason of your spiritual perception and let it clear up the proposition for you. 
dismiss all prejudices based upon the mixed perception. Make your mind receptive to the clearer understanding that will surely appear when you have taken sides with spirit. When you look to spirit alone for the outworking of the problem. This is not blind belief. It is in the super consciousness an acquiescence in the logic of being. The super consciousness is man's only sure guide in the mazes of the creative process. By trusting to the infallibility of this guide, man opens himself to the inspiration of the almighty. Spirituality may be cultivated by, and the deep things of God may be revealed to anyone who will mentally proclaim and affirm the logical perception of the goodness and the truth of being. The central proposition in the inspiration of spirit is that God or primal cause is good. It does not make any great difference what you name this primal cause the important consideration is a right concept of its character. The Hindu calls it Brahma, a being of such stupendous proportions that man shrinks into nothingness in contemplating it. Although this greatness of absolute being is true, there is also another point of view. The smallness of that same being as evidenced in the presence of its life in the most insignificant creations. So in order to get at the very heart of being, it is necessary to realize that it is manifesting in the least as well as in the greatest. And that in the bringing forth of the universe, not only one idea could be taken away without unbalancing the whole. This brings us to a fuller realisation of our importance in the universe and to the necessity of finding our right place. It also puts us into very close touch with the father of all, the one omnipresent intelligence pervading everything the father within you, so lovingly and familiarly revealed by Jesus, is not a distant, far away thing in a place called heaven. His abode is in the spiritual realms that underlie all creative forces. As Je Jesus realized and taught, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Spirit is the seat of power. Its abode is on the invisible side of man's nature. This revelation of God imminent in the universe was clearly set forth by Paul. Over all and through all and in all. The inspired ministers of all times have proclaimed the same. The power that creates and sustains the universe includes in its activity the creating and the sustaining of man. The desire for a fuller understanding of this power has awakened a great inquiry into the character of the all-pervading one. On every hand, men are earnestly seeking to know about God, seeking to come into harmonious relation with him. Some are succeeding, while others seem to make but little progress. The diversity of results obtained is caused by the variety of ways approaching the one mind, for such God is. In mind is the key to the whole situation. I'm gonna say that one more time. In mind, is the key to the whole situation. And when man clearly discerns the science of mind, he will solve easily all the mysteries of creation.
the dictionary definitions of mind and spirit are nearly identical. With this analogy realized, we are much more easily, we much more easily get in touch with God. If spirit and mind, sorry, my cat's just digging in his litter box. If spirit and mind are synonymous, we readily perceive that there is no great mystery about spiritual things, that they are not far removed from our daily thoughts and our experiences. Ye are a temple of God. Ye are a temple of God and the spirit dwelleth in you. Simply means that God dwells in us as our mind dwells in our body. Thus we see that God creates and moves creation through the power of mind. The vehicles of mind are thoughts and it is through our mind in thought action that we shall find God and do his will. There are mental laws that investigators are discovering, observing and tabulating as never before in the world's history. Man has the ability to discern and understand the various factors entering into the creative process of mind. And he is, through the study of mental laws, perceiving and accepting the science of ideas, thoughts and words. But those who investigate nature and her laws from the intellectual and physical viewpoint fall short in complete understanding because they fail to trace back to the causing mind the multitudinous symbols that make up the visible universe. The material forms that we see about us are the chalk marks of a mighty problem being outworked by the one mind. To comprehend that problem and to catch a slight glimpse of its meaning, we must grasp the ideas that the chalk marks represent. This is what we mean by studying mind back of nature. Man is mind and he is capable of comprehending the plan and the detailed ideas of the supreme mind. Divine ideas are man's inheritance. They are pregnant with all possibility because ideas are the foundation and cause of all that man desires. With this understanding as a foundation, we easily perceive how all mine are thine. All the ideas contained in the one father mind are at the mental command of its offspring, us. Get behind a thing into the mental realm where it exists as an inexhaustible, inexhaustible idea and you can draw upon it perpetually and never deplete the source. With this understanding of the potentiality of primal cause, we find it a simple matter to work the problem of life. The key to this situation being ideas. Thus life in expression is activity. In being, it is an idea of activity. To make life appear on the visible plane we have but to open our mind and thoughts to the divine idea of life and activity. And lo, all visibility is obedient to us. It is through this understanding and its cultivation in various degrees that men have acquired the, the ability to raise dead bodies. Jesus understood this realm of supreme ideas, or as he termed it, the kingdom of God within you. When he raised Lazarus, he invoked this power. When Martha talked about a future resurrection, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth 
on me, though he die, yet shall he live. One who identifies his whole mind with omnipresent mind becomes so much of, at one with it that he can overcome death. The real of the universe is held in the mind of being as ideas of life, love, substance, intelligence, truth, and so forth. These ideas may be combined in a multitude of ways, producing infinite variety in the realm of form. There is a right combination which constitutes the divine order, the kingdom of heaven on earth. This right relation of ideas and the science of right thought is practical Christianity. The student in the science of being should start all his investigations and mental activities from the one mind foundation. If you are skeptical about the existence of God, or if you are an abstract believer in God without having had any experience or conscious mental awakening that has given you proof, you should be very industrious in prayer, affirmation and invocation. Remember, God is not a king who you can force his who can force his presence upon you, whether you will or not, but an omnipresent mind enfolding and interpenetrating all things. There are goodness everlasting and joy beyond expression in a perfect union between your mind and this perfect mind. The point of contact is a willingness and a seeking on your part. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. This question naturally presents itself. If we are offspring of divine mind, why are we not naturally conscious of its presence? The answer to this is, in using the privilege of our inheritance, the power to make ideas visible as things, we have created a realm that separates us in consciousness from the father mind. This is the teaching of Jesus in the parable of the prodigal son. When we are wary of the sense consciousness, we have only to turn our face, intelligence, toward our father's house. There we shall meet a loving welcome. The understanding that God is not in a distant heaven, nor located in any way geographically, gives us a feeling of nearness to and unity with the parent mind. This intercommunion of the man consciousness with the omnipresent spiritual force of the universe was beautifully exemplified by Jesus. God was closer to him than hands or feet. He referred all things to this loving father who was in constant communion and cooperation with the son. Yet there was, even in his case, the independent personal consciousness that beset him when he sought to be free from mortal limitations. So we should not be discouraged or cast down if we do not quickly find the kingdom of God within us. Jesus spent whole nights in prayer we should not be weary with a few moments each day. A daily half hour of meditation will open up the mind to a consciousness of the inner one and will reveal many things that are hidden from the natural man. The fact is, truth cannot be imparted. It must be individually experienced. The presence of divine mind in the soul cannot be told in words. It can be hinted at and referred to in parable and likened to this or that, but it can never be described as it is. The ability of the individual mind to combine the ideas of divine mind in a consciousness of its own makes each of us the only begotten son. A particular and special creation. No two individuals in all the universe are exactly alike. 
because there is always diversity in the ideas appropriated by each individual from divine mind. The truth is then that God is principle, law, being, mind, spirit, all good, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, unchangeable, creator, father, cause, and the source of all that is. That God is individually formed in consciousness in each of us and is known to us as Father when we recognize him within us as our creator, as our mind, as our life, as our very being. That mind has ideas and that ideas have expression, that all manifestation in our world is the result of the ideas that we are holding in mind and are expressing. That to bring forth or to manifest the harmony of divine mind or the kingdom of heaven, all our ideas must be one with divine ideas and must be expressed in the divine order of divine mind. So now we'll move into the statements, just here, for the realization of divine mind. So you could also call this the affirmations for the realization of Christ mind. Okay, let's start by taking three nice deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And when you breathe out, really push your all the air from your stomach out as much as you can and really breathe in to your lower abdominals as much as possible. And if you like, you can keep your eyes closed. And after I read each one, there's 13 statements or affirmations altogether. After I read each one, I will leave a space for you to say it back to yourself, either in your quietly in your head or out loud. So as you like, let's begin with those three deep breaths. And two. And three. There is one presence, one intelligence, one substance, one life, the good omnipotent. Two, God is the name of the everywhere present principle in whom I live, move and have my being. Three, God is the name of my good. Four, God Almighty, Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Five, thy name is Spirit. I know thee as the one, the all-seeing mind. Six. 
6. Our Father, who art in heaven, the everywhere present inner harmony, hallowed be thy name. Wholeness manifests thy character. I'll say that one again because it's quite long. Our Father, who art in heaven, the everywhere present inner harmony, hallowed be thy name. Wholeness manifests thy character. Seven. Thou art always with me as indwelling wisdom and love. Eight. Thy law is now the standard of my life and I am at peace. Nine. I in thee and thou in me. Ten, thou art never absent from me. I now see thee face to face. Eleven, I think thy thoughts after thee. Twelve, I dwell in thee and share thine omnipotence. And number 13, the number of Christ, the center point of the circle of life. In thee is my perfection. In thee is my perfection. Now, if you would like to just rewind the last minute and a half or two minutes and redo those affirmations or statements and just dwell in this beautiful, truthful energy, for a few minutes longer and you have time to do that, then I definitely recommend it because these statements are written as the truth and they do build reservoirs of living substance inside of us and they do help us to understand and help us to, to really ingrain that connection with truth, with God, with divine substance so that we can really embody it and really grasp it and not have it as this thing that's coming back to us and slipping away from us in each moment, but have it as something that's an everyday thought, a well-entrenched understanding, a habit to know that this is the truth, that we are one with God. God in us and us in God and that we have access at all moments to divine peace, divine wisdom, divine love, the love and peace that surpasses all things. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you are all well and um, yeah, see you for the next one. Lots of love.